Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Natalie's Adon. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are into another match. Steel Blue versus Pet Turtle on Fairyland. Pet Turtle going for the Shieldbot Factory. Steel Blue going for the Colgibot Factory. Kind of a classic matchup there. Those of you who are not super familiar with the game, again, Colgibot Factory is a faster factory. It's a bot factory, again, so it's a bit more all-terrain than vehicles. But it is a lot faster. Particularly the Glaive unit, which we'll be seeing a lot of, is... Pretty much the, not so much the best raider, but the highest risk, highest reward raider. If you can use glaives really well, you can dominate, and th at the same time, they're very vulnerable. Steel Blue, however, not going for early raiding. Building a couple early constructors just wants to get their economy going as quickly as possible. And going straight into reverse. Doesn't even want to play the raiding phase. Just wants to go straight into riot, get those anti-raider going. Same time, Pet Turtle does have a couple of bandits, primarily for protection, but ultimately we will probably see them do a bit of scouting and a bit of raiding. That being said, Steel Blue, speaking of scouting, they are going very far forward over to the northwest side of the map immediately with their commander. That is daring. I mean, that that is a statement. They're basically saying to Pet Turtle, I don't care. I'm going on your half of the map to do my first expansion. By the time Pet Turtle gets there, it's going to be huge. This is risky, but if Steel Blue can pull it off, they're going to have a very strong economy, because from here... They can take these metal extractors here, and then go over to the northwest, and then go from there to the center west. And they'll be able to hold on to all of that, because it'll be fairly easy to defend just along this line. Oops. Just along... Come on, you. Just along this line. Pet Turtle, I don't know if they're aware of this. And their radar... No, the radar coverage does not get to that expansion, so they don't actually know that Steel Blue is building up there. Now, Steel Blue probably doesn't know where the radar is, but they might be thinking they want to avoid it. And they currently are. They're currently out of radar range. <laughs> Danny Ren pointing out that this map bears a distinct resemblance to a certain dragon who burninates. Yes, it is. I don't think it's intentionally a Trogdor reference, but I see where you're coming from. It really does, now that you pointed out. Good eye, Danny Ren. And those of you watching on YouTube who don't know what the heck's going on here with the random things I'm talking to in chat, well, that's because this is on Twitch, as it always is. I just usually tend to, to not really act like it was on Twitch for the stuff that's on YouTube to make it sound like it's on YouTube, but eh, screw it. It's more fun to just interact with the chat. If you want to join in and be part of the chat, come into the Twitch stream. The schedule's on the Twitch stream. The Twitch stream link is on the YouTube page. Back to the game, though. We do have Pet Turtle. Now they're doing some scouting. They're trying to see what's going on. They do see that this expansion has not been taken, and I'm curious, do they know the expansion up here? They think... I think they don't... No, they don't. They don't know that it's there yet. But that Sparrow should be able to see it fairly soon. Does see that everything else has been built up, and they probably figure Steel Blue is not playing with a low economy. But Petrol might be getting suspicious. Petrol right now, they've barely expanded at all. While Steel Blue is, like I said, rapidly taking as much of the map as... Oh, okay, they were rapidly taking the map. They aren't really going to the northwest as I expected. But it's still there. It's still an extra couple of mental extractors. Still worth it. So Steel Blue goes for that metal, goes for that raider. And there's the Sparrow. Finally, finally spots it. Pet Turtle now aware there is an expansion in their front yard. Not sure they're, if they were aware of it, but they certainly are now. Of course, this is still a matter of what is Pet Turtle going to do. There was already a Stardust built there. Steel Blue already has radar. They have their commander. They're expanding further in. Steel Blue has had plenty of time to consolidate this expansion, and they have done so well enough that I don't think Pet Turtle is going to have a chance to deal with it. At the same time, Steel Blue making sure Pet Turtle hasn't expanded too much, and Pet Turtle, honestly, they're... They're not building enough workers, as was pointed out earlier. That's the thing. And yeah, KKK, they, they changed it. You can get a... It's not a radar plane. The Sparrow does not have a radar. It's simply a scout plane. So you either have the radar coverage, or you have more vision with the flying unit. But it's not like the Owl, which has both vision and radar. So it's a trade-off. Pet Turtle going for a Nano Lathe spam to try to stop everything being from attacking their commander, which... That's just not, a, it's not a terrible strategy. Did buy enough time for the Bandits to get back here, but it may not matter. The Reaver at least able to deal some damage, but not enough Ronin's Reavers to deal with the commander in the first place. Pet Turtle will be able to stop this, but that's not really the problem, is it? The problem is Steel Blue has the western half of the map. That's the problem. Steel Blue is the western half. Pet Turtle doesn't have much they can do about it. They're trying to build up and get their resources as quickly as possible, but it is going to be tough. 
And at the same time, Steel Blue just keeping on with those Reavers. Just continuing to go into the Reavers, doing what they can to build that up, which I... Not sure I totally agree with. I think Reaver Ronin is a good idea, and I think the Phantom is a really good idea. Getting that up in response to felons or outlaws or whatever else would be in the shield ball. I like that, but it's kind of weird. And no, you can't morph it back. Sparrows, you cannot morph a, you can morph a radar to a sparrow, you cannot morph a sparrow back to a radar. It's not like the Iris or an Eraser or the Aspis and Aegis. Those can go back and forth, this cannot. Not sure that's a technical thing. Anyway, the fight coming in here to the Northwest Expansion. Petrol trying to make sure Steel Blue does not have this expansion for as long as possible. The Rogue is able to stop that Stardust and will be able to stop the Reaver. But, of course, the Phantom already here, already prepared. But it's a question of can it even get in? Because that Stardust is going to go down. There's no more defenses coming in here. This is risky. This Northwest Expansion is basically done. And we see Petrol... They've got that. Steel Blue acknowledges this fact. Same time, Petrol also harassing the Southeast Expansion as they're able to start to really pull back this game. I mean, Steel Blue definitely expanded quickly, but I don't think they managed to expand quickly enough. They went to this northwest and center, but they didn't do that as soon as they had this protected in the north in the center northwest. And that, I think, is costing them. Pet Turtle was never that far behind economically, despite the fact that Pet Turtle did not take much territory until right now. Not to mention, Pet Turtle has gotten a much better attrition score, and they're going to continue to do so, continuing to get rid of all this expansion. The commander is basically dead. They're going to be having to jump into the water. That is their only choice. Man, at least being a recon commander, they have that option. But yeah, we're going to... There it is. There's the jump into the water. And there's the commander. Can't really do much, but hey, what else are you going to do? Actually, is it going to matter? Yeah, the outlaw's too far away. I thought the outlaw might be trying to get in and have enough range to actually take it out. But it looks like no. The commander is able to walk out of there, get out of there. Just barely. But that's still a dead expansion. Steel Blue's early play not really paying off. So we're not seeing a whole lot of value here for Steel Blue. And Pet Turtle, they've been able to just come back in on this. Now, admittedly, the Phantoms are here. They are causing some problems. They do do a good job against Shield Balls, but they're just not in position. Pet Turtle, again, there's another expansion being taken out. The Thugs going in here essentially just baiting out all these Stardusts while continuing to damage it. Get rid of this expansion. Get rid of the next expansion. Get rid of the main base. Steel Blue's got nothing left. They have the Phantoms, and that's it. And even with the Phantoms they have, it may not be enough. It's doing a decent job. I mean, against Shield Bots, it is strong, but it's, like, it's tricky. And then, of course, you'll start to see Bandits coming here and try to hunt them out. Or just snitches, just in case they get a bit too forward. Like, this is still not a position that Steel Blue is going to be coming through easily. Like, this force, yeah, a couple units are going to die, thanks to that Phantom. It's still going to be able to plow through everything here. So there, there's nothing going for here. Like, this is it. Now, Steel Blue. Steel Blue, I'm not sure what you have planned here because Pet Turtle, they've got the economy. They have the attrition. They have the units. Phantoms are not doing the job. Did the Phantom just kill its friend? I think, I think the Phantom just actually shot its own its buddy there. I just... I don't know. And... Yeah, Mighty Sheep. I kind of agree with you that Phantom... Phantom is a bit of a weird unit. Like, Cloakbot Factory is a bit of a jank factory. It's because of the cloaking mechanic. And the fact that, you know, you have this unit that is kind of slow. I think I think if Phantom had hit scan weapons, or just a much, much, much faster projectile, it would probably be okay. But the fact that the projectile is so slow means that it can be dodged so easily. And it's like, you just don't know whether or not it's going to hit you. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of weird. Because this is the one thing that Cloakbot Factory has for, like, mid to late game. They don't really have anything else. So that's why we're seeing Steel Blue go for it a lot, and it is working reasonably well, but it's not especially well. Steel Blue still lost a ton of metal. Pet Turtle still taking most of the map. Still has a 2-to-1 advantage on economy. Oh yeah, and also, the if you can interrupt the pointing out that the you get hit, the team killing happens because the shot is so small, and the hitbox is kind of weird, so it ends up shooting despite the fact that it could kill someone who walks into it during the projectile's flight time. Which is exactly what happens all the time. So that's the thing. Pet Turtle, I don't understand what you have here that's... Sorry, not Pet Turtle. Steel Blue, I don't understand what you have here that's actually going to do the trick. Like, the Phantom really doesn't have much more... Oh, yeah, Dirt Bags. Pet Turtle already countering that with the Dirt Bags. Cheap unit comes in there. Can walk around, see where the Phantom is. Because things decloak by proximity. If you're close enough to a cloaked unit, they will decloak. Okay, Mighty Sheep at the Spare Point, pointing out that Phantom is just a unit that feels bad to use. And I kind of agree. I think that having a faster projectile or a hitscan weapon or something 
that makes it a little bit less unreliable would or a little bit more reliable would definitely do the trick as it stands though it is a little bit just janky as you said there's steel blue again going in for a commander shot actually commander's doing a pretty good job here not really worried about it too much able to start possibly rebuilding getting some stuff in the western side of the map but steel blue 33 to 56 metal it's not in a good spot the phantoms are kind of helping but it's still not a good spot they're still going to be smacking dirt bags Still going to be not really hitting a lot of value targets. Honestly, they're not a lot of value targets. There's no felons or anything. This army can deal with phantoms. It'll lose some of its numbers, but it'll be fine. So that's one thing I'm thinking. Is just there? Uh, what? What do you have, Steel Blue? Like, what really is there that you got that's going to do the trick? So, given that, it's like Steel Blue. I mean, you got some defenses though. I give you that. And that is one thing Pet Turtle isn't really doing, is trying to deal with that. Because right now, if Steel Blue is playing this carefully enough, they will win on attrition. They will get reclaim in their territory. And it actually might start turning around for Pet Turtle. Oh, right, Steel Blue. Steel Blue actually in the chat right now, saying things are going to get interesting real soon, because there's going to be a mass fight. Okay, cool. I mean, you'd know. You played this. And yeah, you're right. This it is massing up. I mean, you must be right. You played this match. You know what happened. But that will be interesting because, you know, three or four Phantoms, five Reavers. There's a lot that can get rid of a nice clumped group of units in this group coming in from Steel Blue. So Pet Turtle might have to be careful still, but they also do have a lot of units coming in. A lot of them are Dirtbags. Those Dirtbags are going to be able to go forward, start taking out those Phantoms, or at least detecting the Phantoms for the rest of the units to take out. But they're maybe not moving fast enough. The Dirtbags need to get in the front lines, they need to get in front, need to get in and actually take out the Phantoms or bait them or whatever else to stop the Phantoms from dealing damage to the rest of this force. And there it is. The Dirtbags are... Birdbags Bandits coming in. Getting around with the Reavers. Pushing things back. This is the fight. Phantoms able to take out a few units in the back lines here and there, but the Dirtbags coming in close distracting the Reavers while allowing the Rogues to get in a few shots. Unfortunately, none of those shots managed to hit those Phantoms or much of anything else, but still able to do some damage. Those Reavers should start to go down pretty shortly. And now with Steel Blue's units against the wall... Range is a question that has to be answered in a way that Pet Turtle is not going to be on the bat on the bad end of it, because Pet Turtle is starting to fall, is far, starting to fall dangerously close to their opponent, and that is giving Steel Blue a lot of room. Actually, able to take out all the thugs. The rogues are still alive, but the thugs going down without really dealing enough damage to the reavers to make it worthwhile. Dirtbags causing a giant wall with their corpses, and right now, not a whole lot's coming from Steel Blue that's actually getting torn apart. Pet Turtle, on the other hand, losing all of their army twice now, and Steel Blue with 4,000 attrition advantage, despite the metal disadvantage. They are playing this so efficiently, this could turn around on that fight. And Petrol in the chat pointing out they don't like to switch air because they think it's boring. I think I think gunships are a choice. Fencer, not a not a bad option though. Fencer, I could see it. I guess darts would be nice to actually deal with the phantoms, but I it's fair enough. We don't want to go for light units. Fencer isn't a bad choice, but right now Pet Turtle is on the back foot. They have the production capacity, they are able to get the units up, they have the factories, so it's not like they're going to be falling behind for long, but Steel Blue is still winning very hard on attrition. But again, I can kind of see the Fencer for dealing with the Reavers, I just expect that the Phantoms are going to wipe out all the Fencers immediately. Like if Steel Blue is micring this at all, the Fencers are going to go down. And they're going to go down quick. But maybe not, maybe not quick enough, actually. The Reavers are still getting destroyed. They are still being pushed back. And Reclaim is happening on top of that. And Pet Turtle is using that Reclaim to get even more forces. So they do have a chance. Not to mention the Bandits coming in over to the southeast side of the map where nothing is really set up. While also splitting up Steel Blue's entire front line, leaving just the Phantoms, some of which are already visible. There's the Darts coming in. The Reavers haven't been destroyed. The Darts are the best option to get rid of this cloaked units. So Pet Turtle entirely on the ball here. More and more Phantoms go down, and with that, more more and more we see Steel Blue's chances are fading. I mean, Steel Blue basically just has two Phantoms left. That's their only defensive force. The Bandits have arrived. They are starting to take out what's left, and while there are some anti-raider forces over here, the Reavers and the Stardust, there's just a few things. That's it, and the, Re and the Fencers, once they catch up, will be able to destroy all of that. Not to mention Pet Turtle on point with the scouting. He knows exactly what to do and where to do it. Steel Blue realizing that's the case and throws in the towel. The nice GG after a fairly intense game.
good opening by Steel Blue didn't quite pay off as well as it could have, and that led to Pet Turtle being ultimately able to win a few fights, win an attrition, and turn that into an economic victory, allowing them to... Well, I mean, the economic figure was kind of already there, but certainly allowed him to break the army that Steel Lou had, turn it around, and then completely win. Like, especially here, like, where the army was so much bigger on Steel Blue's side, but it all just came down to the fencers doing a really efficient job. So good call there, Pet Turtle, on the fencers. So that is that game. We are going to have one more game before I go tonight, or today, whatever. Bit of a shorter stream. It's going to be Pet Turtle again, this time versus Ezer Ride. And we're going to be on Wanderlust. And to address chat here, Pet Turtle asking, how could they have won? Like, how could Steel Blue have won with Cloaky? And I'm not sure, but I think... I think considering what was happening, Glaives would not have been a bad idea. Like, considering the units that were primarily part of this force... Having Glaives on reserve for when the Outlaws were killed off by the Phantoms to then rush in and destroy a bunch of stuff, that might have helped. But I think the big thing is Steel Blue did not expand quickly enough to win quickly. I, I think if Steel Blue had basically taken advantage of Cloakie's speed and the swiftness with which it can get into the match, then Steel Blue would have had a better time. But letting the game last as long as it did, yes, with Cloakie that's very hard to make work. Also Knights. Knights would have been a good option too. Anyway, next match, Pet Turtle versus Ezerite on Wanderlust. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.